Good day to everybody out there in TV land. This is Mike Hitner with Historic Point Boss Update. Today joining me is Tom Bramer. Welcome, Tom. Good morning. Tom. Good morning. We're going to let you know a little bit about what's just happened at Historic Point Boss and what's coming up in the future, and then uh, a little bit of ramblings in between sometimes. <laughs> Somebody saw this the other day and they said, I didn't know you could talk so long. I said, I didn't either. <laughs> I think it was those um, uh, when the, somebody from public access came out and did the, did they oh, record yes, you? Oh, yes, yes. No. Yeah, they did some too there, yeah. They yeah. did a, like a five-minute sort of basic, I did a kind of rap, mm -hmm. and I said, well, it wasn't really hard. I was, I was condensing like 150 years of history in five minutes. It wasn't too hard. <laughs> I said, I could have kept on going on, but uh, they wanted just a little five-minute. They used it as little yep. perks out there yep. for, uh, for the public there. So we're talking uh, a little bit about what's just happened. We just got done with Spirit Walk. Uh, great two weekends. Mm -hmm. Anybody that came out, you know how it was. Weather-wise, perfect. Uh, uh, and we had uh, some great uh, spirits. Uh, a little differentiation between the two Saturdays, but basically the same. Tom, what was your take on it? I know that you were Professor Wilson, and mm -hmm. you were the first in line, so sometimes I think you went around a little bit maybe one of those days and caught some of the other programs. <laughs> but it, it, it's a little different when you're a spirit versus a guide. This year I was a guide, so I didn't, I didn't do that end of it. Yeah. So what's your uh, thoughts? I thought it was good. We had a lot of people. I think probably the biggest total number that we've ever had, yes. if not the biggest, very close. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and everything seemed to go okay. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed, uh, I went along as, because I was the first one, I could tag along with to catch some, uh, of the other ones. some of the other ones, which sometimes I don't get to do. And uh, I thought everything was really good. Uh, um, it's a little hard sometimes because you're outside and you're telling stories. Um, you know, if you're in the back of the group like I was, because I was trying to be pretty... Uh, uh, Nondescript. Yeah, just kind of <laughs> just kind of shadowing there. Um, but uh, it, I, I think it was well accepted. Uh, we had a number of, of uh, compliments. I know Mary said yesterday that uh, the gals that were the witches the second week. Well, they, they did a wonderful really job. Really nice job. And, and what was nice, uh, uh, two sisters, uh, Katowski sisters, uh, Allie and Beth, uh, did uh, witches and uh, even sang some, which was really uh -huh. nice. But uh, I don't know if it was just where they are at, and then they stood on stumps sometimes, so they're projecting down, but their voices carried really mm -hmm. well there. In some other places on the site, the voices don't carry nearly as mm -hmm. well with the larger group. And uh, I was very pleased. I was very uh, pleased yeah. with what they did. Uh, I know that uh, we had at least one email person that had a few suggestions or whatever, and it was, it was happened to be my group, and so I kind of know what happened. Uh, one, we take groups through, and normally they're about 15 in a group. Well, part of the, another group had not got the answer to come, th to come with the previous uh, guide. And so what I ended up doing was getting my group and a good portion of another group. So I had a, I, I was figuring somewhere in the area of 25 to 29. And it was a little hard for me, you know, I'd wait until they all got caught up before I'd say something before we went into a building if it needed a presentation. Mm -hmm. But when they were standing probably 25, 30 feet away, it's hard to project that much and to maintain it for very long because you normally outside as a guide maybe two or three times where it slows down a little bit and you have another group that you have to spend a little time taking up a few minutes. And so the projection was a little hard and uh, the party said that it was a little hard to hear. And then I had suggested they come up and come up closer around me because I was just the only person there. So that they could have come within mm -hmm. five feet all the way in a circle or a oh, semicircle yeah. around me. And, uh, and so I think maybe that helped to remedy some of that after that point. But uh, uh, that does happen. Unfortunately, that group should have been two groups of 15 to 20, but one group uh, missed their cue or something to take off. And that does happen, not very often, but uh, I think uh, we have a great storyteller, Don Matthews does stories there. And I think, I think sometimes <laughs> they get so enthralled <laughs> in the story that they don't want to leave or they don't hear that, yeah. you know, the uh, green and yellow group are going now that they keep listening and they don't realize until it's too late that they missed their group and now right. they have to catch right. another group. So, but uh, that was a small, uh, you know, little problem that we had or a little issue there, but it was just a minor thing. And I normally what I did and I did it with Tom and I did it with anybody else that had 
uh, this group, I said I went in in advance as the first person in because I have a tail guide behind me making sure we don't lose anybody. And I said we got a large group this time to let them know that they're either going to have to project more or wait till the shuffling is done because mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to exactly tell when everybody's there. You think they're all there, but maybe sometimes they aren't. So, mm -hmm. But uh, I think <laughs> after you do it two or three times, not only does your presentation sometimes get better, oh, yeah. but you also get a better feel for is everybody there now? Yep. Because a lot of us, when we're presenters, I know you were, you were facing off to the side or to the back, mm -hmm. and then when everybody is there, Leonard, Leonard, where are you? You know, you were, you started your uh, spiel. And, and I started it facing away from them and went to facing sideways so I could see out of the corner of my eye a little better. If everybody was there. Yeah, because I, I didn't want to be facing them as they came in, but I wanted to be able to kind of look out of the corner to see, okay, now I've heard the shuffling stop as the movement stopped. Right. And that helped me a little bit. But like right. you say, the first two times through I faced the other way and it was it didn't feel right so no. I I changed you know it's pretty minor but it could make a big difference oh, and yeah. then I think <clears throat> after one of my groups I had made the suggestion to hold things up and I think that yes. worked better yes and because, I did that the whole second week because a lot of times the, <clears throat> the the parents will bring the children forward which works good because the kids can see it but sometimes uh, Tom was working off a table uh, when he talks about something, we hear that, but we don't necessarily see it. See it. So uh, mm -hmm. later on, he held up things. This was Marie Antoinette's hair, and, and you know whatever it was. Yep. <laughs> All so kinds so, of crazy. So, stuff. so so I think it worked better. So yep. it was a very successful uh, two-day. Uh, uh, spirit Walk, and like to thank all the public that came out or participated in it, uh, our, our spirits and uh, oh, yeah, our tail guides. And it takes a lot of people because we have to set up and we have tail guides, ticket takers, uh, storytellers, cider people that mine, mine the uh, cider booth there where we got some uh, fresh cider that we press ourselves. Yep. Everybody wanted to know what they kept asking Janet. What's the recipe? What's the recipe? I said, that's just our, and then they were, when I said, apple cider, evidently they took it that there was some alcohol in it because they wanted to get some water from the basement to dilute it. I said, well, just let it cool down. I didn't realize they were talking about alcohol. Of course, there's no alcohol and it's just apple cider. Yeah. Pressed apple juice. It's uh, not clear, of course, because it's uh, not filtered. It's not filtered. But <coughs> when I said cider, they were thinking of, you know, the, the ciders that are so popular today. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, the cider boys and all these other things. They thought it had a cider. So I was wondering if it's hot, this, you know, two minutes it'll be cool because I know that we put it in a coffee maker and it does get pretty hot yeah. but I, I was wondering and then finally I figured out what they were getting the water for because they thought it was diluted down they didn't want to give the kids any alcohol or well, not much of it but it, there was no alcohol in it no no so no it was just apple cider now if we let it sit out for a couple of weeks then uh, that's different we would have had it something different there but it just sat out for three or four days to thaw out and then we we used it that evening so yeah, it was great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about school groups. Uh, if you folks don't know, <coughs> we entertain, uh, oh, probably 25, 30 school groups during the year between spring mm -hmm. and fall. Now we've got one on Friday, the 31st. Uh, if you, whenever you're watching, that'll be Halloween day. But that's our last group of the year just because it gets too cold. And, and even this week, I've mm. been out, you've been out twice, and it's a little chilly. And uh, as a as a uh, interpreter, sometimes you can wear only so much clothes, so uh, it's kind of hard to interpret if with too much and still without enough, it's cold. But uh, that's something uh, for you parents or grandparents, anybody that might be watching this, that uh, uh, schools, we entertain anything from kindergarten through seventh, eighth grade. So, and, and a lot of schools come out. Right now, we've been having a, uh, a group of second graders come out and meet school, meet charter school the last uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Friday will be uh, house school. House school, yeah. So uh, give us a little take on that, Tom. These are second graders, so you have to, as presenter, we have to bring our presentation down a little more touchy-feely than uh -huh. talking so much. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> um, they do four, four buildings. Um, the schoolhouse, the barn, the house, the cabin, and then sometimes the blacksmith shop. If they've got a large group of kids, but not enough to break it into two days worth of work. Now, Mead had plenty of kids. They divided up into two, and about 40 kids. Each day. Each day. Eh, 50 is about what we can handle at the most. So, uh, but some schools don't have enough for two days, so then we'll do five stops, hmm. so that we break them still into small groups. 
10 to 12 kids, second graders in particular, in a group is about enough. Um, we're not, most of us are not prof professional educators. So uh, We're not used to crowd control. <laughs> no. <laughs> and we're worried about doing our presentation. The teachers are very good about keeping the kids focused on what we're doing, and hopefully our presentation uh, is attractive enough to keep them focused. But eh, second graders wander yeah. a little. <laughs> well, and, and I think all, both of us as presenters and all of our presenters would say, by the time you get to that fourth group, now these kids haven't had breakfast. It was about three hours ago and lunch is a half an hour, 45 minutes off. That group sometimes, because I suppose of hunger and other things, their sometimes interest is a little less. And they, this is, when they, you're, they first get there, their eyes are about like dinner plates. They're, yes. ooh, look at this, look at that. Well, after they get to the third, through the third encounter, going to the fourth one, it's like, oh, here we go again. I mean, it's human nature, yes. especially at that age, you know. Um, some of us have still have that attention span. <laughs> well, if you had taken us in second grade, it would have oh, been for that sure would that have not been good. Yes, <clears throat> but uh, um, you got to kind of concentrate as a presenter on the the, the second group or the uh, the fourth, third, and fourth group is a little tougher. No matter who's there, and actually, all the kids have been very well behaved. I, it's not behavior, it's trying to keep their attention. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm, I'm sure the teachers deal with it every day. Right. And, uh, now, do you deal with uh, second graders, Tom, more with showing them the pelts and feeling things like that? <clears throat> Is that how I, you approach I, uh, it? Yeah, and I make sure when we talk about the fur trade, and we're talking about beaver pelts and the beaver hats. I really wish I had a top hat to show them. But we have to look at uh, <coughs> Momsey when we're there. Maybe somebody's got, got some old or we ones. Can t we can yeah. talk. And we, Tom and I have talked about uh, when they have the breakaway into different committees. Uh, Momsey, we're a Midwest organization that we belong to. We're going to, a, in about two weeks, to Midland, Michigan mm -hmm. for a, a conference. And I'm going to ask if, if they can't get a listing or inventory of people that have extra things. Yep. that they don't need, that have been assessed to them, that <coughs> either they'd like to sell or trade or something like that, because it'd be nice to get an old beaver, uh -huh. beaver A real fur beaver hat. hat. And they're expensive, <coughs> and it doesn't have to be all that great shape, and it doesn't have to be able to fit anybody. That's the, the good Just part. It can it. be big or small, I mean, you know, compared to the person's head. Right. But to show the hat. <coughs> um, but we talk about the top hat, um, we, I usually use like the Charles Dickens kind of, and they go, ooh, Christmas Carol, okay, we yeah. got that. Um, <clears throat> then uh, they'll feel <laughs> the beaver pelts, and they can see the two different kinds of fur, so that kind of puts it in perspective for them. Um, then we've got a, some pictures of the big Montreal canoes. Mm -hmm. Okay, they can, I mean, that's pretty close. That, that, they can understand that really well. Um, we, we get talking about the uh, portaging and whatever, then while they don't get to portage, I have a tump strap and I get the one pack up on my back and they get the idea of how this is done, so that works well. Um, when we get to the part where the voyagers in camp, they used to eat pea soup, uh, dried peas, salt pork, cooked into a porridge with um, ship's biscuits, uh, later called hardtack, um, as uh, their, their food source. So I've got the dried peas there. I don't have any salt pork there, but they can figure out closely what meat is. Right. And then, uh, then the, the ship's biscuits, I can show them that. Then we go into doing uh, fire starting with flint and steel. Well, then they're all eyes. Right. I mean, that's... The last five minutes of my presentation is the easiest part. Even though starting a fire with flint and steel is not the easiest thing. The easiest thing. It's the easiest thing to keep their attention because, you know, it's like fireworks. Are they interested in the beads at all, Tom? Do you talk about the beads? We don't of the talk about graders? beads too much <clears throat> because beads, to, to be historically correct, were not traded for, but given yes. mostly as gifts, mm -hmm. um, more as the. Uh, you know, the coup, well not coupon, but the, uh, oh, what am I going to say? You know, when, when a business used to give out the toaster, you remember when we were kids and right. you, you come Saved in. Saved up and, the coupons yeah, and you got right, a free right, toaster. Yeah. Well, it's that kind of a thing, the, the little extra 
deal so that when the uh, head man of a Indian uh, clan or group would come in, he would make a, you would make a presentation to him of some gifts, mm -hmm. which he could then distribute to the other people with him. So I look good, he looks good, and the, and the average fur trader or uh, fur trapper hunter out there also got something good, you know. Right. And uh, so we don't get into too much because it's too hard. Just the conversation we just had with a second grader, they get lost on some of that, yeah, I think. Yeah. Or so, so the beads you kind of stay away from, other than if a higher there. higher group. Yeah, and if or if they grade. ask, yeah. if they ask about them, then we'll go into it. But yeah. well, generally speaking, I kind of your counters so high that those some of those second graders, graders are a little bit. Anyway. Yeah, they they wouldn't see it anyway. <laughs> right. Now, if any of the public out there listening, watching, uh, would have one of those beaver hats, we certainly would be amenable to accepting it mm -hmm. as a donation or for a small fee would be that sort of thing. And there may be one in somebody's <laughs> attic or something that Lord was only knows. Uncle Jacob's or whatever it was. I think they probably were fairly uh, popular maybe up until the turn of the century, maybe a little bit beyond that, but not much not more much. than Not much. They went to the bowler hat kind of right after the Civil right. War. Because when you talk about caps to kids, they think, no, baseball cap style. Yeah. So when you talk of this, top hat. Yeah. They probably they, wonder they, what they're top They're pretty hat good is. with it. Fourth graders are better because yeah. they're a little more exposed. But uh, it's uh, the more you can show and tell a school kid um, while you're telling the story. I, I don't like to do show and tell as in let's walk around the room and look at stuff. No, we have a, a story to tell. Right. But if I can hold up this or that or let them feel this or do that, it, you know, it makes them part of the presentation. Right, and you want to keep it, it more focused. Right. If you walked around the room, you know, with most of these groups, and, and I don't know about this particular group because I was just dipping candles with them on Tuesday, uh, if you start allowing questions, it goes all over. I save them till the end. Yeah. I, I really try to save them to the end because a lot of times we'll cover what they're going to ask about a little further down the road in the right. presentation. Or they got, are you oh. as old as you say, or do you yeah. live here? The oh, yeah. usual oh. questions. I had that five times yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> do I live here? Yeah. How old are you? Well, yeah. then you get. I always tell them, of... do you live here? Well, if you ask my wife, she'd say, <laughs> exactly probably agree I with you. Too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> School groups are not only a good way for the children to learn, and the beauty of Point Boss uh, for you folks is that we're just east and south of Nakusa. Now, a lot of groups in schools, for whatever reason, got used to going years ago, probably traditionally, mm -hmm. the Heritage Hill, which is one of our closer ones. It's in Green Bay. It's a wonderful place. Oh, yeah. Lots of history there. But you have two hours on the bus getting there and two hours getting back. So four hours out of that school day is spent moving them, these children, back and forth. Where us, normally we were within 30, 40 minutes of oh, Stevens yeah. Point Rapids, uh, uh, Nakusa Adams Friendship area. So I think the furthest away we've ever had is Mosinee, and that's only an hour, right. a little better than. Right. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a good opportunity for them to come here because certainly you're going to have to rent a bus or your carpool or whatever. I think the public schools can't do that because right. of liability. Yeah, sometimes we have like Emmanuel Lutheran or St. Vincent's or somebody will come in with carpooling, but... Even most of them are bus, bus nowadays. nowadays just because it's easier. So, and, uh, so it's a good opportunity for them to come. Now, on our side of the point of view, certainly the reason we're open is to interpret things and to show you what Point Boss and how important it was to the central Wisconsin community early before we had Wisconsin Rapids and Stevens Point and everything. And also it's a very good source of revenue for us. Now we're a not-for-profit private group, but we have no other source of income other than groups that come in and tour and then our different events where we charge admission, like Spirit Walk was $4 for adults and $2 for students. That's our only revenue. We don't have any other way we make revenue. I mean, we have a couple, you know, we have a you know, winter feast and a couple events you know, like that during the year once in a while. Uh, the bicyclists come through on grab bar and we serve them breakfast and we make some money on that. But I mean, our basic most 90% of our revenue comes at site, mm -hmm. basically. And so the school groups are a good source of revenue. And uh, uh, we got to uh, feel pretty good as a group. And thank you folks out there that we're doing okay. I mean, we're not suffering a lot of these historic sites. When we go mm -hmm. to Momsey, we're going to hear all kinds of horror stories about 
different state or county or, or city, you know, different venues, uh, different sites that have cut back or they got only part-time or they only got now two full-time, they used to have four or five. I mean, we hear all those horror stories because they're supported from outside their area and that's the problem. That's what we didn't want to get into. Right. We, we could see that possibility and we didn't want to go there because we knew that if the county came in and gave us some money, well, they could just as soon take some money away from us when things get tight, and things at different times do get oh, tight. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, and, and you can't blame the, the county or the <coughs> no, cities no, or whatever. No, taxes are, you know, that's yeah. a big deal. And, and the, unfortunately, and I don't know if we're considered the arts, but we probably are somewhere in that category. The arts are one of the first things to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the band and the orchestra and the choirs, and it's, uh, it's history field trips. History field trips. The, the field and stuff. trip, I think, is the part that that you get gets cut sometimes because oh well, gas is expensive yeah, i mean yeah. you know it, it's an undertaking and yeah. uh, these now the kids come to us um an all-day tour is six dollars yes with candle dipping and the whole bit i think it's otherwise it's four three four. or four i can't remember um and that's mean, just like a morning or an afternoon so that's a two hour um in pretty intensive two hours touring around the site yeah. and then you know considering you know, 15 minutes to get assembled and 10 or so minutes to get people mm -hmm. together. But um, when you think about it, and I've talked to most of these teachers over the years, that bus costs much more than oh, what they're paying for oh, the tour. Oh, yes. You know, and, and <coughs> some of these- That's the part that hurts. Yeah, that's the part that hurts, but they have to have a bus to get there, unfortunately. Yeah. And so uh, we had some groups, and I don't think they do anymore, some Nakusa schools used to walk out. Or they bust they out walked home. Yeah. and walked home. They had a big rope and they all held onto but, the rope on the way home. They, they changed that whole, uh, because of the middle school, junior high, high school thing. Well, and it also the school moved further away. It used yeah. to be close yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. And teachers change and what they used to do, now they don't do it anymore yeah. sort of thing. So, uh, Also, uh, we'd like to put a little bit out there for you folks that we're building a bunkhouse next spring. We'll probably mm -hmm. start. And we've talked about it. The, the people that work on these sort of projects, and we usually work Monday mornings. Anybody's welcome. Monday morning between nine and about 12, 1230 or so, we work most Mondays. And we talked about one of our last buildings will be this bunkhouse. Now we've recreated most all the buildings that the, we know the Wakeleys had. Maybe do a smokehouse, and, but smaller building. So this bunkhouse, 12 by 18 or somewhere in that area, 14 by 16 or whatever, the Wakeley's had on the site for seasonal workers. Now what we'd like to do with this a little differently, and we've talked about it before, is to do this all by hand. Now previous to this, we used modern tools and equipment to do the buildings that uh -huh. we've had. But this one we want to use hand saws to cut the wood, and we want to use you know, hand drills to drill, and all this stuff you know, that, that they would have probably used when they built it themselves. So this is kind of an opportunity for you if you're interested in that, and like to try it, or see what it's like, or even come out and watch it. Uh, certainly we invite you, probably not until spring, probably, you know, like April or something mm -hmm. like that. We gotta lay the foundation first and get that all set and then that has to cure a couple weeks, but we're probably talking mid-April and then we can only go for about three or four weeks and then we gotta get ready for uh, you know, our historic uh, weekend, the Point Bass Pioneer Festival. So we gotta cut off, plus in between we have schools. Mm -hmm. Usually a bunch of schools, especially end of May. Yeah a lot of that sort of thing. So if anybody's interested, then you call Tom or I and we could let you know when we get started on that. But mm -hmm. I think it'd be, a, a, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. I, yeah. It's one of those things I've thought about a lot and we, we've talked and tossed it and we had a few, you know, Tom and I are, well, we kind of go with the flow. We're not what you'd call purists, but we try to be as, as purist as we can. But we had some real purists that that's the only way they ever wanted to do anything and, and certainly could have worked. Yeah. It just would have been a lot slower process and at the time, we got a really good work crew now, and I think at the time in some of those years, I don't think we had the crews that could have done that. You know, it just depends on the personnel you have to work yeah. with at the time. Right, right. Now we have skilled people, right. three, four of them that are, and they're all skilled in different areas, thank goodness. Yes. <clears throat> but they're, uh, it, it's really nice, and then when you get to that part, the one that, that has, the, has the skill kind of takes, takes the lead. The lead. Yep. And in fact, I heard the guy that's normally our lead Mm -hmm. say to one of the guys that's normally not, it's really good that you were here because I would have never been able to figure this out. And coming from him, that, because I mean, he's really good at stuff. Yes. And uh, Mike and I are kind of, um, 
uh, apprentices at best. Yes. <clears throat> but uh, some of these guys are professional carpenters, pipe fitters, uh, heating, cooling guys. And um, boy, I'll tell you, it, it was really nice. When we were putting that chimney up, we had a steel chimney. And it's a modern chimney because we don't want to burn the building down. We're going to make it look historic. But uh, our normal lead was saying to the guy that's normally uh, uh, one of us work, worker bees, boy, it's nice to have somebody here that really knows how this is supposed to work. You knew all the rules and yep, regulations. Yep. and all the, the and codes and everything. Setbacks and everything. And wow. we would have well, just done it. Yeah. I and, mean, <coughs> I mean uh, we're probably fortunate over all the years that we really haven't had any issues. But considering just doing it, I guess we use a certain amount of common sense, yeah. which I'm sure is pretty helpful in the yeah. whole process. But um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, been nice talking, Tom, this morning. And uh, uh, next event, which we'll talk about in more detail in November, is Heritage Holiday, which is on December 20th, old-fashioned type of Christmas at the Wakely site from 3 to 7 p.m. So anybody gets a chance, mark it on your calendar. We'll talk much more detail in the next month when it's get a little closer to that. But We'll come back next time and talk about our Momsy trip and some other things will be kind of interesting. So thanks again. Thanks, Tom. Yep.